SpaceX has made history, launching the world's first ever space flight carrying only civilians. The Inspiration4 crew successfully reached orbit yesterday and collecting medical research for future flights over the next two days. Joining me live now for Space News of the Week, Brad Tucker, astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU. Thanks for your time as ever, Brad. So uh, described as a healthcare worker, so a reward for them and a, a wealthy benefactor, I suppose. Bit of a space flight with a difference. Yeah, that's right. You know, this whole mission, as they even called it, Inspiration4, was kind of about giving other people besides billionaires a chance to go into space. As he said, uh, a healthcare worker who herself, Haley Arcano, survived pediatric bone cancer. She wanted to be an astronaut as a child. Um, obviously, that was derailed a bit. Uh, there's also uh, Chris, and Chris... Uh, Chris's friend actually donated to a charity uh, raffle drive going to the St. Jude Children's Hospital where all these proceeds have been going. And Chris's friend won the grand prize, which was this seat, but he didn't want to go, so he gave it to his friend Chris. So, you know, this really <laughs> sums kind of a, a very different group of space when we've seen, you know, with uh, uh, Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos coming up in July. And the flight length and the height it's just different than those flights again in July. So really different and kind of that vision of what people I think think about when they're saying private people going on space trips is this flight. Yeah, we saw some of the image of it. I mean, I, I think of private flights, I guess, as still maybe having a little drink on the way up or when you get there. And uh, I, I guess the way they sort of, you know, Qantas does things such as the um, Antarctica flights, but they're basically just what um, amateur astronauts yeah, that's that's kind of a good way of putting it. They are actually being amateur astronauts. They had to do some training. They're doing, as he said, some experiments. They're actually going to be studied when they come back. One of the, the big things going into space is your body goes through a lot of changes. And a lot of our data comes from previous professional astronauts. Well, most of those astronauts are white, male, U.S. and Russian Air Force and Navy test pilots. That's the bulk of people who've gone into space. A little bit different than who's gone on this flight. So there's going to be a bit of a use uh, they do get food on this flight. It's just not as nice as you say, maybe on one of those luxurious <laughs> flights around Antarctica. Uh, there'll be a certain novelty in the, um, I'm assuming some sort of freeze dried space stuff, but maybe that's the that's stuff right. of the 80s. I don't know. Um, supernova time. Now, these are exploding stars. Scientists claim to have observed a new well, way that they explode. Is that a fair way of describing it? Yeah, you know, we, we know there's a few different mechanisms for causing stars to explode, and it kind of depends on how big they are. Well, in this case, it was kind of theorized that if you have a supernova or a big star, and it's in what we call a binary system, two stars going around each other, and it collides actually with an older star, what we call a neutron star, well, that collision can kind of prematurely cause the star to explode. So instead of reaching its natural endpoint, this collision triggers a supernova explosion and it would look a little bit different in space. It'd be a bit fainter because, again, it kind of blew up a bit early and it would blow up in a very distinct um, kind of shell, kind of as you're seeing in animation here. And so when this collision happens, people could find these unique signatures of this explosion and say, hey, this star has collided with an old neutron star. Uh, and they believe now this has been the case of a supernova discovered last year, the result of one of these collisions. So kind of space keeps surprising us in a way stars can explode, you know, keeping us on our toes. Yeah, it will and frighten some of us. Um, so ending on a slightly lighter note, this one has perplexed me. NASA and the Russian um, state body in charge of, uh, well, effectively their version of NASA, Roscosmos. They're extending the stay of astronauts for a movie to be filmed. And these astronauts stay six months, I think, for a two-week filming session. I, I'm scratching my head at this. This seems bizarre, Brad. Yeah, you're right. This is a, a, almost out of a movie plot, um, and it kind of is. And, you know, we, we talked actually a little bit last year that Tom Cruise was looking at going to film a movie in space. Well, he got bumped to a flight next year because this Inspiration4 mission of SpaceX happened this week. Well, Russia decided they could slide in, have their own actress, uh, your lead, person lead, uh, and a director go up with film cameras and film a two-week part of a movie uh, with a Russian TV studio on the space station. Now, because this Russian actors and director need to go up and down in a relatively short time, so usually they kind of, the new people go up and the old people come down on the capsule, they rotate them that way. 
But because this actress and director need to go up, that means the current American and Russian who are scheduled to come down on the returning flight uh, are now going to be scheduled to come back on the next one, which is not for six months. So, yes, they are literally having their flight in space extended for six months so Russia could film a movie to beat Tom Cruise. Figure that one out. I don't know. Maybe they're letting too many people up in space now. Brad Tucker, uh, you'd probably say the more the merrier. We'll talk next week. Thank you. Take care.